All right, so the concept of fractals developed by Bill Williams is going to be uh, at the core of this market structures lesson in order to add once again another layer of robustness in the identification and validation of trends in the market. Now, in a, uh, in a nutshell, all a fractal is is a change in behavior, a, uh, a trend change, if you will. Now, Bill is the, uh, in my opinion, and I think there's popular agreement on that, he is the ultimate authority in this field of market structures. And um, he's dedicated pretty much all his adult life to, uh, to study fractals as a, uh, as he calls it, a, a new uh, maths application for for trading. Ever since the 80s, he's been, you know, dedicated to the teachings of that. Now, um, in a more eloquent and elaborated way, in in this slide that I provide, um, Bill Williams describes a fractal, and uh, if you really want to get even further details you can get grab your his book uh, trading chaos where chaos he defines it simply as uh, new incoming uh, information you know if you will in a you know in a less in a less fancy term now uh, if we have to think about nature what it really is you know wh what's a fractal in in nature out there so a, a, a fractal in nature is an irregular geometric object with an infinite nesting of structures at all scales and uh, why do we care about fractals in the first place you might be asking and the reason is because natural objects are fractal in nature and chaotic trajectories like price movements in the chart are also fractals therefore assessing the fractal uh, properties and attributes of an observed uh, time series is going to be very informative. Now, as an example, if we were to ask ourselves, for instance, as the example of this slide, how long is the coast of Britain? Uh, the coastline is irregular, so a measure with a straight ruler, as in the and as in the figure that I'm providing in the slide, provides an estimate at best. However, notice how we can start breaking down into almost infinite structures, all scales, and really that's what I want you to focus on. That is absolutely the crux of the matter. Bill Williams uh, does provide, uh, you know, through his book, uh, what he calls the three principles that are going, going, are going to be governing fractals in the first place. The first principle is that fractals reveal uh, price behavior as part of a repetitive, uh, repetitive patterns that hint at the path of least resistance. Now, the second principle is that this path, uh, or this path in singular, is going to be determined by the underlying and often unseen price structure. And the third principle is that these unseen structures or structure can be discovered and can be changed, which for us as traders would mean that it can be exploited for profits. Now, to prove this point, in his book, once again, Trading Chaos, which, by the way, there are several versions, so you might want to get your hands on the newest one, which has been updated with the latest adaptations. Uh, in his uh, latest book, uh, Bill Williams proposes all students to go through an experiment or game. And um, in this slide, you can see all types of random numbers scatter all over the place. And Bill asks students to play a trading game that is going to blow every, every single person's mind, which is going to determine how successful a uh, trader is going to be by how high can go in numbers. So he's going to be asking uh, the students to put a pen and draw that uh, draw that uh, pen from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, etc. And in, a, in just a period of 30 seconds, and at the end of the experiment, uh, your successful uh, number of trades and how high you can go in number of trades is going to represent how profitable you can be in real life being a trader okay so after the the first round of the experiment is done he then asks students how many made it to you know 15 10 or 5 and the common pattern is that students may really really struggled to make it far meaning higher in the number in the numbers chain you know 15 really is 
too high of a number for the majority for the majority of them okay now on round two the the students are given a subtle yet very relevant clue and that clue is the following all the odd numbers are actually going to be found on the left half while all the even numbers are going to be found on the right half and now just like that all of a sudden by knowing this bit about the underlying structure in that piece of uh, paper with numbers scattered all over the place it gives you a very important clue for your behavior as a trader for your behavior to change so it means that when you hit one and head two you can automatically eliminate half the choices and that translates in minimizing the bad trades because your attention is going to be to only half of the paper and as you know the best good trade is going to be found on the other side okay so building goes one step forward and he has the students to fold the paper one more time so that it creates like a full quarters and then he reveals another subtle clue which is that the first six numbers one through six are in the top half 12 through 18 are in the bottom half 19 through 24 is in the top and so forth so every half dozen numbers you will have to call to uh, cross the midline from top to bottom and just like that more information is given now we can eliminate three quarters in each choice we make and that will yet again translate in better and faster decision time now after all this information has been shared with the students bill once and once again is going to be asking to go through the experiment only with the subtlety that this time he will be shaving the time by one third now how do you think the students perform after having these inputs about the underlying structure if you're thinking that they did better you are right over 90 percent managed to double or more its highest number with less time available and so the clear model of the story here is that once the students were given access to the initially unseen structure and change their behavior because of that better quality decisions translated in higher numbers of successful trades right so in brinkmanship terms if you will and focusing now on the visuals as it relates to trading what is it that constitutes the fractal formation that uh, we are being told at times but we might not be quite sure okay so i'm going to be explaining now how that formation of fractal is formed in the charts and i have to say that is a very straightforward concept the detection of a fractal formation happens as part of a five successive price bars uh, group where the third or the middle uh, of that bar uh, group is going to represent the highest high or the lowest low within that set of five candles right now um, the the picture in this slide would be considered what uh, it's often referred to as orthodox uh, fractal and uh, kind of like looks like a 10 either a 10 or a reverse 10 right now let's now look at an orthodox fractals which is another uh, you know pattern that still gonna qualify but doesn't quite look like a 10 and in this slide right here you can see the different variations of what uh, would also constitute a fractal now to go full circle in the application of the fractals we must be aware of the following concept of the Dow theory which is going to uh, you know it states that a market uh, trend is going to persist until a clear reversal occurs and uh, as part of the strategy that we're going to be deploying to analyze the markets when the pattern of higher highs in an uptrend or lower lows in a downtrend is violated we will assume that a reversal in the primary trend while you know being difficult to determine if it's just going to be short-lived or it's going to be you know protracted in nature 
might be possible. Therefore, we will take a more cautionary stance and determine that the market in that time frame in particular is going to be sub, in suboptimal conditions to be traded. Okay. Now, a trend should always be treated as intact until there is a clear sign that the opposite trend has started. In between, we're going to have ranges and the next lesson we'll touch on that, but stick with this theory for now. Now, the Dow theory also states that a bull trend is identified by a series of rallies where each rally exceeds the highest point of the previous rally or the previous swing high, if you will. Now, the decline between rallies ends above the lowest point of the previous decline. And uh, in, this, uh, in this first example, we see, for example, here a series of successful and uh, successive higher highs and higher lows. And uh, just pay attention for one second in this slide that I'm providing so that it is clear for every single uh, one of you. Now, in our case, uh, the strategy of an uptrend, uh, sorry, the strategy, uh, in our case, the, the start of an uptrend is uh, going to be signal when price is going to make a higher high above the previous high. If that's followed or preceded by a higher low, that's even better, but it's not going to be needed. Okay. Now, in this scenario, the end is signaled by a decline below the previous register low or swing low, if you will. Now, if that new low is preceded or followed by a lower high, that's even more confirmation. And that's how a bull trend will end in a new uh, bearish trend will begin. A bear trend is going to start at the end of a bull trend. When a rally ends with a lower peak and then retreats below the previous low. Okay. And uh, the end of uh, a bear trend is going to be therefore identical to the start of a bull trend. And as I said, in between, there's going to be different characterizations of what uh, market that goes into a range looks like. And so we will have to definitely account for ranging markets, but that's not going to come until the next lesson. Now, in a bear trend, each successive rally fails to penetrate the high point of the previous rally. I just want to focus on the bear trend now. And each decline uh, terminates at a lower point than the preceding decline. A series of successful lower highs and lower lows is therefore what's going to represent a bear trend. Now, after um, clarifying what fractals are to be able to you know, identify relevant pivot highs and lows in the chart in a uh, systematic manner and how to read shifts in trends as part of the strategy, it is also now, I believe, time to provide a handful of examples to make it clear how this all blends in together. So let's just let's jump into the charts and let me provide a few examples for all of you. Now, by introducing a well-defined indicator such as fractals, there is no guesswork. We either have a structure that is going to be making higher highs that validates a bullish trend or lower lows that is going to validate a bearish trend. And uh, as we will find out in the lesson that comes next, we will at times be meandering in between and be in a position to call a range has been established. All right, so let's go through a few examples because I want to leave no stone unturned. I want to be very precise, very clear and extremely detailed in the interpretation of fractals and how when that gets to be blended in with the Dow theory, you can call trends in the market as long as remember you have a multi multi time frame approach. Now for the sake of this example and for the sake of really providing something that is going to be tangible and there's going to be, you know, meat in the bone, I'm obviously just going to be focusing in one single time frame, but 
when we apply the strategy once this course is over you will notice that our approach to the market is going to be multi-time scale so first of all let me grab the lipstick so that we're going to be making some annotations in this chart of the gbp against the us dollar on a four hour time scale so we're going to be starting from the uh, top left okay we have to always select a starting point and the starting point is going to be this high okay so notice here that the moment that the price finds acceptance and breaks below the previous swing low which is going to be determined by the fractal right here we now have a new trend that is going to be uh, present in the market now i have expanded this first window which is going to be highlighting the fractal indicator so essentially whenever we have a bearish trend this is going to be highlighted in rent and whenever we have a break of a fractal high you know we're going to have a uh, green uh, color in this window and that represents a bullish trend so you can see here that we have several transitions from red to green and green to red but let's i digress so let's go back to what i was explaining here which is we have a break of a fractal and that puts us immediately in a market that is going to be bearish for the time being until what point are we gonna be bearish until we retake a previous fractal high when is that happening at that point right here so from the moment that we had this break until we did retake the previous swing high as represented through a fractal this was the time window that we were given permission based only on fractals but remember there's going to be more components that we're going to have to account but since this lesson is only based on the fractal component of the price in the chart then we want to only uh, be fixated on that for the time being okay as i said so right there we have a market that has gone into a bullish state as long as the previous fractal low doesn't get taken out now does it get uh broken or not it does at what point not there you would have thought about it because ahead of it we had another fractal being formed right here and notice that after a few candles that the price tried to rebound eventually we fail so right here at this candle that's when the market eventually makes a new lower low so essentially price breaks the previous uh, fractal low and that's always going to represent a transition in the fractal nature of the markets and communicate that we are entering a new bearish phase and the bearish phase this time lasts from this point until right here which is the time when the market once again makes a high that is higher than the previous swing high as determined by the fractal now does it last long this fractal so this bullish trend no it doesn't because after a few candles that the price keeps pushing i mean do not get me wrong in a four hour time frame this definitely represents potentially some buy side opportunities depending on the time frame that you're going to be analyzing and once the market breaks below the previous swing low again as represented by the fractal and we have an acceptance by one single candle that is going to be accept um you know finding equilibrium below this previous fractal low that's when we move into bearish territory as per the fractals and notice here a peculiarity of this bearish run which is that it does last longer than the previous ones why is that because even though we had attempts by price to keep pushing higher at uh, you know on these rebounds it never took out the previous fractal high and this is going to be a characterization of a market that is trending quite nicely with a stepping type formation and these are the ideal conditions to engage in uh, bullish or bearish uh, market trends because we are having as per Dow theory and what it's stated in there we are having markets that are successively printing lower lows lower highs followed by further lower lows and lower highs which is at the epicenter of what the textbook theory uh, you know how the textbook theory defines a bearish trend and this is what we had here for a you know uh for a number of uh for about a week or so now when is it that this structure this 
conducive structure gets violated right here this is the time when the fractal take, uh, was taken out the priors the previous fractal high and we are going to at this point right here we are going to initiate a new uh, bullish trend which once again it does last for quite a bit until this blip right here which happens to be a false movement which immediately gets to be regained by the fractal the previous fractal high being once again taken out so this was a rather uh, short lived and false movement uh, again let me reiterate it and the market once again uh, the bulls took control and notice that the run towards the upside made it to even be you know happen to be even more prolonged than the previous bearish run as you can notice here we had a higher high followed by a higher low a higher high followed by a higher low another higher high followed by a higher low and right here that's when we start to struggle and wise once we throw into the mix the bollinger bands for the identification of a range you will be safe and you will actually be glad to know that this is going to represent a market at this second test that fails that is going to be not tradable and it's gonna uh, you know uh, divert our attention somewhere else because this market will no longer be offering the optimal conditions to be traded now when is it that the market once again initiates a bearish or bullish phase right here in this candle that accepts below this previous swing low that's when once again we ex we um the market uh, f goes into a active bearish uh, side campaign now this bearish side campaign lasts for uh, from the 13th of july all the way to the july the 20th and in between you can notice that we start off with uh, you know the right type of formation with low lows and then we print lower highs but notice that here we're starting to fail by forming a, a, a higher a higher low followed by a lower low so this is what we call in market terms a compression and whenever we have a compression there's definitely going to be no tradable opportunities or not as easy to be found in the vast majority of cases because the the market is not providing a clear cut information as what as to what are the intentions until we have a breakthrough and the breakthrough occurs through these candles in here okay so let me just clean up the chart once again because this is the type of movement that you want to be involved and this is the type of uh uh price sequence that when monitor through a fractal is going to keep us on the right side of the market for the majority of the movement so notice here that once we had a breakout of this fractal and uh, all these fractals also got uh, left were left behind even though it's not necessary for the change of this uh, fractal indicator color which only takes taking out the previous fractal to shift the color from red to green so this is what led to the explosion in price that eventually printed let's just count how many times successfully we printed higher highs followed by higher lows so here we have a higher high followed by a higher low it looks like eventually uh, we obviously did break higher but there was a bit of a struggle at this uh, sticking point of resistance so we let the market once again break higher higher high higher low higher high higher low higher high higher low higher high higher low lower low so once again here that's when we get activated a bearish trend but as you will soon find out in the following lessons once we start to account let me retrade that with higher time frames and knowing that the pound us dollar on the daily was clearly on an uptrend then it's going to make it much more tricky for us to put our bearish hats even though the four hour is communicating that the path of least resistance during that moment in time was towards the downside and confirmed by the fractal okay so let's just keep moving on because from that point on even though it did represent a false movement buyers also started to struggle massively to break into higher highs and right here that's when we enter what i call a compression and whenever you have fractals all over the place and very close to each other 
like in this case notice how many fractals i can identify within a very narrow uh you know confinement and uh, the delimitations if you think about it is between 131.50 and 1.30 so within 150 pips which is proportionally a tight range compared to the big monster movement that we saw there's a lot of fractals that are being found and whenever that's the case that obviously is going to suggest that the market is in a consolidation in a range in a distribution whatever you want to call it at the end of the day is a market that is non-trending and we want to stay for the most part away from it okay and we can just keep going on and on and on so hopefully you get the picture in this latest run notice how the fractal once again started to print higher highs with higher lows higher highs higher lows higher highs higher high another high high only to then start to uh, you know the only for the uh, structures to start being violated at that point right here and we remain until uh, there is a takeout of this previous high as the fractal as the fractals stand uh, we remain in a bearish trend in the four hour time scale in the pound against the us dollar and as usual this will always be indicated through the fractal indicator which i've highlighted in this first window in in uh, different in different color schemes either green or red all right so that is the you know the practical part that i wanted to make sure you are not going to be uh, missing and remember that we will be able to uh, combine the fractals with the SMT, which I have uh, squeezed and left here in the second window because this is not the focus of the lesson. But we, as part of the strategy, will be combining both the fractal and the momentum to really spot the most uh, powerful and the most discernible uh, trade uh, tradable opportunities as per the directional bias that we are able to find congruence in both the lower and the higher time frames right